Hi, welcome to Salvage Yard Stories. I'm Uncle Dave. I think in these videos, I'd like to share with you some memories that I have of different cars that I've owned, or maybe cars that friends have owned, uh, the stories behind them, because I truly believe that having a car and working on a car by yourself is a very sad experience. When you work with other people and you have those types of memories, it just, it just makes it all the better. My first story would happen to be in, uh, let's see, 2001, I ended up with an 81 Volvo 244. Um, I liked the car because my dad bought one brand new in 85. I drove the car for about a year and a half and I, I really enjoyed it. It was a base model car, nothing fancy, didn't even have air conditioning. But I was driving it, uh, I think to the grocery store and I ended up getting sideswiped by an older gentleman. I ended up having to park it on the side of the road and walk home. Consequently that night, my mother comes over to my apartment, maybe 10, 11 o'clock, and I'm thinking, what are you doing here? She says to me that my car got hit. And I said, yes, I, I know that, about two in the afternoon. She tells me, no, there was a kid, 14 years old, who stole his dad's car and hit your car twice. So I was like, oh no. Well, after that, I ended up driving a 96 Saturn for quite a while, but that's another story. I ended up, because of my, my fondness for this 240 Volvo that I had, you know, I didn't have the internet at home back then, so I would go to the public library. And for an hour I would look at cars on eBay and hope and wish and want. Well, it just turned out that one day I was driving into Kansas City to the community college, and I had looked to my left and noticed a two-door 240 Volvo which is extremely rare to find. They made the car from 74 to 93, but stopped selling the two-door in 85. Uh, so it was a pretty old car. Well, I decided I was gonna do a U-turn and I did something that most people would say was a little crazy. I pulled up in this driveway, went to knock on this person's door. Uh, this, this larger gentleman came out, he had two dogs and he asked me uh, if, he, if he could help me. And I said, uh, I really like your Volvo, your two door there, would you sell it? And he was like, are you serious? And I said, I, I'll buy it. And I had just gotten a tax return, so I had money in my pocket and I paid him $1,800 and lo and behold, a friend brought me back up there and I brought that car home. Um, I learned how to do rust repair on that car. I learned some, some about doing uh, aftermarket wiring on the car added fog lights, I painted the car. Well, I decided that my dad and I were gonna become a part of the uh, Volvo uh, club, and it was the Kansas City chapter. Well, we went to the uh, meeting, there was maybe 12 or 13 people, and one of the people in the club said to me, are you the guy who bought Vern's daughter's car? Vern, uh, was a gentleman in Kansas City that owned Vern's Imports. He worked with uh, older Volvos, BMWs, and Mercedes. And I said to her, well, no, I bought it from a private seller um, down off of Parallel Parkway. And she said, that's Vern's head mechanic. He bought that car from Vern. And I said, oh yeah, well then I guess I do have that car. And because the car was a rare turbo car, multiple people had been waiting for him to sell it. Well, I guess they weren't as motivated as the guy who was just doing a U-turn in Kansas City. Well, it turned out that it was owned by the gentleman that had the vintage Volvo garage, and then his daughter drove it, and then his mechanic drove it. So that story intrigued me, so I decided, after all the work that I had done, I would go back to Kansas City and go see the gentleman who I purchased the car from. Turns out, he had an 89 240 sitting in the driveway, so he didn't. it didn't take him long to get a better car. Because I gotta be honest, the one he sold me was a little rough, but uh, you know, I was happy for him to get a better car. You know, it just goes to show you that when you, when you, when you take a risk and you purchase a car, sometimes it ends up just being transportation, but sometimes it ends up having, you know, people behind it and it can be full circle. Well, 
There was a person on uh, North 9th Street, where I lived in Leavenworth, Kansas. Uh, he was an IT specialist, worked with computers. But he had three old 240 Volvos and a 740 wagon. Um, I drove my two-door up to his house. I didn't know this person from anything. I knocked on the door and said, hey, I noticed you have some old Volvos in your driveway. That's my two-door back there. And he looked out and saw my two-door and he goes, oh, yeah, that's a turbo. And I went, yeah, it is. I said, do you like Volvos? He's like, that's all my family drives. He said, uh, the green 240 is my wife's, the brown one's my daughter's, the blue one is my son's, and then the 740 turbo wagon is my daughter's. And I was like, no way. Well, over a period of about a year, year and a half, I would come to his house. A uh, guy, his name was Frank. I, I didn't know him until the day that I knocked on his door and he would give me tips. Uh, once in a while, he helped me out with parts. Uh, he taught me how to do a, quite a few things. And had I not just stopped and asked him, I would have never gotten those tips. Takes me to when I went to the public library and I see an 89 240 Volvo sitting there. Now, the 240 Volvo was a big seller, but you have to remember the last model was made in 1993. So that means that, you know, by what, 2007, uh, 2003, 2004, those cars were 10 years old, you know, and the hard to get parts for, so people got rid of them. This 89 was, was beautiful. Looked like the day that it came off the showroom floor. The interior was beautiful. The exterior was beautiful. Had the same four-speed transmission that, that mine had. Well, I noticed uh, a gentleman, an older gentleman, much older, must have been in his 80s, always wore blue overalls, mechanics overalls, but his car was so clean, it was unbelievable. Well, I talked to him, and it turned out that we started meeting for coffee, and he taught me other things about working on these cars. You know, I learned from books, I learned from the internet, but I learned from people. And that's when I found out that a car is a fun thing to have, it's something you can learn with, but it's the people behind the car, it's the people that you meet that are more important. Um, right about the time that he was having coffee with me occasionally, teaching me how to reupholster my seats, or adjust the clutch in my car, or replace the turbocharger, things that I had no idea how to do. You know, I ended up living next door to a family where the father was a security guard and uh, the mother worked as a teacher. And I noticed in their backyard, they had multiple Fox body Ford Mustangs. And I was like, you guys work on Mustangs a lot. And he said, oh yeah, we do. And they had a son that was 18, just a couple years younger than I was. And it, I said, uh, how do you afford to keep these cars running? I mean, parts are expensive. And he said, we go to the salvage yard. And he, he said that like I was supposed to know, like, don't you go to the salvage yard? I, I'd never been to a salvage yard. Well, most people will tell you that I have an extreme fondness for going to the salvage yard for parts. I find it fun to walk the yard and look at different cars. I also find it, you know, really nice that I can save that kind of money. Well, he took me to my first salvage yard, which was off of exit 60. Some of you who know me might know this salvage yard as a uh, you pick it. I ended up in this place for the first time seeing about 300 cars on dual steel wheels up in the air. And I, I just about lost it. I just couldn't believe what I was looking at. I looked through all the rows of the import cars and I ended up finding an old brown Volvo 240. And for the first time, I was able to take parts off of a salvage yard car that my car needed. And it, it was amazing. It was like liberating. Like I didn't have to wait online for very, very expensive parts or hard to find parts because they were right in front of me. Uh, that started a love of, of salvage yards and finding parts. And now I don't just find parts for myself. I find, find parts for many people. Um, you know, I have a father-in-law who has multiple cars. My friends all have old beaters. You know, none of us are rich. Well, I'm able to find parts for all of their cars. Uh, kids I've taken kids friends and family have gone to salvage yards and it just amazes them because people don't realize every car that breaks down or ends up on the side of the road you know they have to go somewhere 
and they end up at these salvage yards. And if you're lucky enough to find them, you can find just about anything. But again, I would have never have been at the salvage yard had it not been for me asking my neighbors why they had so many Fox body Mustangs. These people didn't care about Volvos, they cared about Mustangs. But when he took me to the salvage yard, it was kind of like a melting pot. There were all different cars. He found his Mustangs and I found my, my Volvos. All of these connections that I'm talking about, they've come from having or looking for a vehicle. You know, the camaraderie, the gentleman on Ninth Street who, who taught me all the things that I hadn't, I hadn't known before. And it was because I drove the same cars that his, his kids drove and his wife drove. And I will tell you that multiple times I tried to buy his daughter's 740 turbo wagon and by multiple times I annoyed him for a probably a good two years. And did I ever get the car? No. But I can't hate on him. I mean, the guy loved the car, but I, I wasn't going to stop asking. But And the gentleman, the older gentleman in his 80s, you know, I, I found it unfortunately he passed away. And the car went to his daughter and she sold it which was kind of heartbreaking for me because that that older gentleman's wife had passed away and that car was just about just about everything to him so my advice to anybody you know is is when you're when you're working on a car look around you look for people who are like-minded because working on a car in your backyard painting it putting on some lights changing out some seats as great as that feels it feels 10 times better when you're doing it with somebody else. And I'm hoping that these stories, because I have a whole lot of them based upon the cars that I've bought, I've bought many, my friends' cars, uh, cars for just people that I've worked on, there's a lot of stories. But the thing about these stories you're gonna find, if you're looking for a car channel where I just look at a car and you know I review a car, this isn't gonna be the channel for you. Because all of my videos are probably going to be based upon about this much about a car and this much about the people around the car. Salvage yards, you know, car shows, uh, going to college to work on cars. I'd have to say that the majority of our videos are going to be about people. And you have to remember that without people, cars wouldn't even matter. Well, I appreciate you sitting down here for the first video. Um, I hope to see you next time if you enjoyed it. This is Salvage Yard Stories.